So this is uh, an oscilloscope here. There's a there's a brightness control here. We can turn up the waveform. There's a time base. As I turn, you can speed it up or slow down the trace. So let me turn off the lights so we can see that trace. I'll turn off the TV. So now we have live electrocardiographic information. This is a heart monitor here, and it's streaming live to this uh, web app here that's connected to the phone app. And also, I've got an oscillograph here, and we can kind of compare the waveforms uh, just as before. So we're prepared. Um, we always you know, have the shaver, shave off first, and then isopropyl alcohol uh, to scrub everything down, and then a little bit of sandpaper as well. And so the finally some a little bit of electro paste and we can put some electrodes on there as well. These are some electrodes and I've got a cathode ray oscillograph here that will show the oscillographic waveform. And and so now a little bit of electrode paste on one of them is the ground and this is nothing fancy, no driven right leg. We'll have the ground and then the two electrodes here and pick up the signal and we can compare it with what's here on that heart monitor. So I have here heart monitor and this is not exactly centered but it's pretty close and then there's two electrodes here so we're reading across this place here. Normally when you put on a 12 lead you put on the right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg and they can be sort of around here in this area and then you've got you know your V1 through V6 across here and you know you start in the fourth intercostal region here uh, and then you work your way to the fifth intercostal region you kind of go around across and then around like this to put on the full set of electrodes Usually you're looking at, you know, you locate the clavicles, you locate the sternum, and you find your exactly where to put them. And of course you can read all about that where where they go, and you've got your leads, you know, you're going across the arms and legs. Uh, one of them is a ground or reference, and then you have the extreme the extremities, you know, Eindhoven's triangle, you know, that sort of thing, and then and then you're picking up these other ones that are right near the heart. You tend to get a stronger signal in close to the heart also if I connect this to the cathode ray oscillograph uh, here. You can see I've got a waveform that picks up. The ground lead is not uh, connected as well. I've got a little bit of noise there. Just a little bit more electrode paste on the ground lead. Make sure that makes good contact because otherwise it'll be a noisy signal. And what I usually do is just leave it sitting like that. And we can actually use sticky electrodes that actually stay on. <clears throat> but now, so you can see right there, and a little bit more of this on here. Turn up the brightness a little bit so there's some persistence. So you can see there's my heartbeat on here, and I'll turn up the gain just a little bit. It's better. So you can see that waveform there, and it's in pretty close agreement with what we see on the screen there. It's, this is the app that's streaming continuously, and this is the web app. So my cardiologist, for example, can remotely monitor my heart in real time while I'm running and swimming, so I'm streaming real time video and also streaming real-time ECG. And we have the world's first context-aware heart monitor because 
it streams the live video and you can see what activities are taking place at the same time as you can see the actual electrocardiographic waveform. And so we hope that this context-aware information will help us to diagnose and improve our quality of life by being aware and sensing uh, the, heart, the, the uh, waveform at the same time as we're actually able to see what happened in the environment in the, in the video environment. So uh, today, for example, I went for a run and a swim and we'll be going again each day whenever the conditions are safe to do so. I try to get out for a swim, get some exercise. And so you want a strong, healthy heart. That's what uh, um, one of my cardiologist friends said, uh, that there's no such thing as too much exercise, more exercise is better. So anyway, that's kind of roughly how to set up uh, the, the waveform, set up the electrocardiographic measurement, and uh, we can take this data, put that into a file, comma separated values, read that data out, and overlay that on top of the eyeglasses. So the eyeglasses have a 4K 60p camera, that records video at 4K resolution, 60 frames a second, and then we can overlay on top of that video this electrocardiographic information. Here, unfortunately, we have a white background, so that's not so suitable to overlay, but the way that it looks on the app is a lot more like the oscilloscope, so these two actually look pretty similar, and um, we can see, if you look at this more closely, you can see the heart waveform there streaming along and you have a you have a, a black background and a green bright green trace on a black background so the black ground allows you to cement that trace on top of what you're looking at and then you can sort of see this overlaid and it's just like you know as you're running or whatever you can see that electrocardiographic information overlaid and we also have the mind I've got the blueberry brain sensing health monitor so it senses your mind and your heart and the environment around you. So that's what we often talk about, heart and mind and world sensing uh, eyeglass that helps us see and understand the world with these overlays. And of course we've got this other wearable device. So we have generally speaking wearables, wearable technology that's monitoring our health and well-being. So ECG waveforms were originally made with very crude sort of measuring instruments that responded slowly. And the original labeling, you know, they originally called these parts, you know, A, B, C, and D, and so on. And then um, with better measurement instruments that responded more quickly, we had a sort of relabeling of the waveform, the shape of the waveform, you know, the, the sort of the shape of the waveform kind of goes, you know, like here it goes along and then down and then up and then back down again and then sort of another part over here. And this is called P, Q, R, S, and T, the sections of the waveform. And sort of historically, when we want to label something like in terms of labeling points like this, René Descartes, a uh, French philosopher from the 17th century, often uh, would label, you know, say O is the origin of the circle, the center of the circle, and then points along it would have some point P. Point P. P stands for point. You know, and we'd have some point P. And then uh, a lot of times if there's some curve, the next letter of the alphabet is Q and would be used R, S, 
and T and so on. So it's natural to begin with point P along this curve and then label the next points Q, R, S, and T. This is sort of Rene Descartes, uh, famous for, for I think, therefore I am. It's probably one of his most famous sayings. And he was kind of a, an individualist, you know, he was sort of an anti-academic. And I, I, I really like the idea of, of, of his thinking. It's almost surveillant thinking, like the idea of ordinary individual people knowing what they know and defying what they learn in school and just learning, uh, understanding what they know. And so Descartes uh, had this way of labeling these points. And then going back to this early, uh, the other thing we notice about this early system is it was used done with saltwater baths. So you put your left foot in a saltwater bath and your right and left hand in saltwater baths. So there's three baths there measuring the voltages across them using these crude instruments, which would be, you know, a great big magnet that weighed about 600 pounds with a little wire running through it uh, and a big electromagnet, liquid cooled, and then a piece of wire running through it. And this is a very sensitive galvanometer. These are sort of the early days and even before that, you know, merc mercury tubes that would respond rather sluggishly. But once the galvanometer was invented, you know, it was a, there was ability to measure quickly res the response. The left foot here is in the bath because the heart is on the left side of the body. So typically what we have when we arrange the, the heart is, is we have, uh, when we describe how these leads are laid up, we, we often, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Eindhoven's triangle, which is, you know, this, this way of, of, of thinking of, of the leads. So if we think traditionally from 1911, when we had the saltwater baths with the uh, parts of the body in it, we have the left arm, usually it's called LA, and the right arm, RA. And notice that we put the right uh, arm on the left side of the drawing when we do it. And that's very convenient because we can put it, you know, we can hold it up against our body like this. And then, of course, it's true to what we have, uh, the way it, it is laid out. So it's almost like we're looking at a mirror image of it. So this is the left arm, right arm, and then we have the left leg. And now when we connect to the right leg, uh, the heart is on the left side of the body, so we want to mainly think about the left. So we're going to connect uh, with respect to the left arm, right arm, and left leg. Uh, these are the three points we're going to connect to. And then this point, the right leg is used just as a, as a sort of grounding reference to sort of reduce noise in the, in the signaling, and there may even be a driven right leg. But what we have is sort of these three points here. And what we typically talk about is uh, we talk about, we put the the, uh, on the left side, you've got your positive, and on the right side, you've got your negative. And this is called lead one, you know, this, this point of reference here. And then over here, uh, you've got the negative stays here, and the positive goes down here to the left leg. And this is called lead two, so we call this one, and we call this two. And then if we move uh, over here, if we leave this positive down here and we move the negative over to here, uh, if we put the negative over on the left arm and the positive down here, this is what's called lead three. So we can see we have these three leads and we can see the waveforms from those three leads. You see, when I'm looking at this here, you can see why it makes sense to put the right on the left and the left on the right, because when I hold it up against myself like this, I've got, you know, my left arm, my right arm, and my left leg. Right here is on the left leg, and this is the right leg. So you can see here, you know, lead one is here, and lead two is here, and lead three is here. So it makes perfect sense the way it's written in that diagram when you hold it like this against yourself. So we can see those waveforms. Let me peel down for this. We can see those electrical waveforms. If we look on the cathode ray oscillograph here 
And I also have a more modern uh, allegoscope here. An allegoscope is something that alleges to be an oscilloscope. So now uh, we're going to, if we look at those waveforms as they are, we can probably see them to some degree. And now I've just got some electrode paste here, which I'll put on the reference on the uh, on the right leg, so that's going to be here, and then the left leg it will be one of the, the the inputs. And so now let me turn down the light here, so we can see that waveform a little bit more clearly. And now I have some electrode paste on here to make good conduction again, and. You can see the different kinds of waveforms present. And if I take this and put it left arm and right arm here, I can see a little bit of a waveform. Hang on a second, I've just got to turn on my preamplifier. And Now I have my preamplifier set to a gain of exactly 10,000 and the oscilloscopes one volt per centimeter. And now you can see the waveform there. And so you can see the electrocardiographic waveform and the general shape of the waveform as a function of time. And what we have is about two seconds across, so it's 0.2 seconds per division, 200 milliseconds per division, and there's 10 divisions across the screen. So that is equal to uh, two seconds across the whole screen. And so that's what it looks like when we go from here to here. Now, um, let me take it a little bit higher. Traditionally, your right and left arm electrodes are actually up here. And so, it's a little bit harder to get a good clean signal a little bit further from the heart. And that's why a lot of heart monitors, exercise heart monitors, and that go right um, below the heart, but if I come up here a little bit further and I'm perfectly still, You can see that electrocardiographic information there. Let me move that trace up just a little bit. So you can see that trace there, that waveform from left arm to right arm with the positive lead on the left arm and the negative lead on the right arm, negative wire, a conductor for lead one. And now if I take the... So that's lead one and then lead two. So I'm going to leave the right arm where it is the negative lead, and I'm going to bring the left arm down to the left leg. Lead two, the right arm stays, and the left, we go down to the left leg.
here, down near where the left leg is. So this is lead two, and you can see that's lead two. And then if I take, at this moment, if I leave the left leg right where it is, and lead three is left leg positive and left arm is negative, so I move the negative over to here. And so you can see that wave shape. So wasn't that a lot of fun? So now if we look at what that actually means here, let me turn the light back on here. And uh, so if we look at uh, what we have here is basically uh, we've got uh, right arm, left arm, left leg as sort of there's a kind of a vector pattern that takes place here. And so what we can think about is just grab another chalkboard here and say, OK, um, we have, think of it this way, we can write, uh, oftentimes people write, you know, I equals L A minus R A, and we'll write I, I equals, and this one here is equal to L L minus R A and I, I equals this one here is equal to L L minus L A. So we can kind of write these as, you know, sort of we think of them as vector equations. And then, of course, the other thing that cardiologists often do is to take uh, this to, to consider the the component due to each of these. So if I take, for example, the average of left leg and left arm, which is, is here, and then what cardiologists often do is they take and form these other vector quantities, which is take the average of left arm and left leg, for example, take each of these average points, these three points here, and form three new vectors. So typically, you see something like this. You see um, augmented vector right. These are called augmented vectors. Is equal to r a right arm minus one half left arm plus left leg, and a V L equals left arm minus one half right arm plus left leg, and then A V F for the foot is equal to left leg minus one half right arm plus left arm. And so these are these augmented vectors that you see people use, and that's kind of like, you know, these three vectors here. So you have this sort of six different vector quantities that are often used in cardiology. And so that's very simple uh, cardiology with the limbs. And then, of course, additionally, what people do is they add these other electrodes along the chest that I talked about before. And so you would typically take the, these four 
electrodes and put them at the extremities, you know, the, near the left leg and right leg and left arm and right arm. And then there's six more that you put around near the heart, you know, V1 through V6. And so those are the ones that really are quite useful. And then you get this sort of what's called a 12-lead ECG, but it's really only 10 electrodes that are used to derive it. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, it's been, I hope, oh, I hope you've had lots of fun here.